Hey guys, what is going on? This is car number 5. And in this video, we're going to be continuing our top 10 series. However, we're going to be doing the top 10 left fielders in this video. Now, since we are transitioning to the outfielders, I do want to talk a little bit about why I chose to do um, specific positions individually and not just all of them collectively at once. Uh, for one, I want to get a little bit more exposure to some lesser known cards that people might not use. Uh, and for two, the le like the left field and right field, I found that was uh, it was pretty difficult to put a list together, and it, it was pretty fun. So I think it would be really easy just to do a top 10, top 15 of all the outfielders. Um, I think it would be really top heavy. I would rather do it this way. Uh, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the honorable mentions. First honorable mention is going to be Legend Ralph Kiner. Pretty much this card just can hit. Yeah, he can play first base, left field, center field. And again, this is kind of another reason why I chose to do primaries only, because there are certain cards out there. Ralph Kiner is an example of them, example of one of them that he can't play right field, and he's not going to play center field. So it's, it wouldn't be really fair, really wouldn't do cards like that justice if we just stuck to you know top 10 or top 15 only. But anyways, he does get an honorable mention because he flat out strokes. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty simple. He can't field very well. Uh, but yeah, gets an honorable mention. Another honorable mention is going to be the live series Ryan Braun. Now again, this is similar to the Ralph Kiner. It can just really hit. It hits lefties really well. Um, of course, of inside edge, it makes him pretty dang godly. Uh, of course, the fielding's bad, but I will say this. Ryan Braun does have pretty underrated speed. I think a lot of people sleep on that aspect of his game. Uh, but yeah, Ryan Braun gets an honorable mention basically because of his hitting. Another honorable mention is going to be the rookie Miguel Cabrera. This card can just flat out hit lefties really well. A good platoon option if you need it. He can also play third base. Fielding isn't awful compared to these, uh, some other outfielders that we already looked at. 67 fielding, 75 arm strength. Definitely not great by any means, but this is a good option if you're looking to platoon or a card off the bench or as a pinch hitter. So the rookie Miguel Cabrera gets an honorable mention as well. Another honorable mention is going to be the live series Christian Yelich. Now this is just a really good card if you're looking for contact. He also has a really good fielding, one of the better defensive left fielders for sure. He can play center field and right field as well. Uh, doesn't come in much power. He has a little pop versus righties, but against lefties it doesn't have much at all. He can hit lefties decent with 77 contact, so I find that if you wanted to, if you're just starting out a team and you're looking for a good left fielder, definitely try out Christian Yelich. And for that reason alone, he makes the honorable mention. Finally, our last honorable mention is going to be the flashback Dominic Brown. Um, I like this card because it has a good swing and it has really good power versus righties. Again, the filming isn't really there and this is a card you probably have to platoon with or you might want to use off the bench only. But again, there's not that many good left fielders in this game, so that's why I like making lists like this. And He's going to wrap up our honorable mention list. We're going to go ahead and get into the top 10. Starting at number 10 has to be Legend. I don't know if you consider him a legend, but he's a legend in the game. Luis Gonzalez for the Diamondbacks. Uh, now you get him, of course, by doing the Diamondbacks collection. Um, he bats left-handed, hits righty super well. This is a card you probably have to platoon with, but he has good vision. Uh, fielding again is in the 60s, so it's a little bit better than you know the Kiners and the Bronze. But not a great defensive card, and it's really just there just for hitting. And I give a card like this an advantage over the Ralph Kiner because he hits righties. Um, I, in my opinion, this card I would rather use against right-handed pitching because he bats left-handed, has better contact and good vision as well. So he does make our top 10 coming in at number 10. Coming in at number 9 is going to be the flashback of Matt Holiday you get from Conquest. This is a really well-rounded card. Again, the fielding isn't there, you know, similar to a lot of their other left fielders. Not much speed, but this is a well-rounded hitting card. Uh, similar to something like, you know, I guess the Ralph Kiner, but to me this card's a little bit more balanced. Um, he honestly has very similar attributes to Mike Trout, without inside edge of course. And yeah, this card can just flat out hit, you can play left field or right field. Coming in at number 8 is going to be the flashback Crawford you get from doing the Rays collection. Uh, now this card offers a little bit more versatility compared to some other left fielders and if you're looking for a little bit more defensive value and speed in your left field, this is a really car this is a really good card that you want to check out. You'll have to platoon with him most likely, but you can also use this card off the bench. Um, he could also play a very good center field for you. He has good fielding, 86 fielding, 93 reaction, 97 speed, 88 stealing. So there's a lot of things he can do other than just hit. Um, now against righties, 96 contact, which is really good, and he has 69 power. I found that his power um, is, is enough to hit on runs if you pull him and you, you know square up the ball. It's not like he can't hit on runs for you, so he does have enough power. 
to hit the ball out of the yard and he can play any outfield spot for you so just a really well-rounded card and he's not relying on just strictly power compared to these some of these other left fielders and he comes in at number eight coming in at number seven is going to be the live series starling Marte. <clears throat> now you guys are noticing a trend here i don't look at overall at all so a lot of the uh you know the higher rated cards like the holiday and the gonzalez and and the um kiner they're actually diamond players or some of them are and some of these I'm putting ahead of them are gold because I put a little bit more emphasis on defense, you know, speed, and, you know, reaction, stealing, and whatnot. And these last two cards are good examples of why you don't want to just look at the overall because left field doesn't put much emphasis on uh, fielding and speed and, you know, defense in general. Anyways, this card is similar to the Crawford card. Uh, you're going to get a lot of good speed and fielding. His speed is phenomenal. Fielding's phenomenal, especially for a left fielder. He's one of the best defensive left fielders in the game, him and Crawford both. But, but this card can hit too, um, even when it's not playing up. 82-61 I find to be really, uh, you know, still pretty solid. This is more of a contact hitting card, but he can hit for power, especially when his inside edge is up, you know, just like today. Um, this is a card you can also platoon with. Even though he hits righties, you know, a little bit better, he still hits lefties pretty well. And I really like his swing. He's got one of those compact swings that I find, you know, makes your bat speed a little bit quicker. Um, but I'm a big Styling Marte fan. I've always found that this card uh, is one of my favorite cards to use in the game. And I rank him uh, number seven. Coming in at number six is going to be the flashback Josh Hamilton. This card was released a few weeks ago. And of course, if you're looking to platoon this, you know, you, you can't get any better than this. 99 99 versus righties. Uh, fielding is, is actually surprisingly good, which I'm not sh really sure why. I don't ever remember him being a great fielder. Um, I know he used to be able to play center field, you know, a decent amount, uh, but he's more of a corner outfielder. However, of 84 fielding, if you know, if you're looking to platoon and you have somebody like, you know, and you don't want to get Ted Williams or whatnot, this is a really good card to platoon with or use off your bench. Um, you probably, you, you don't necessarily have to think, but I, I would. Uh, but anyways, this at least this card comes with a little bit better fielding compared to some other left fielders. Um, but yeah, uh, you, this is pretty much a platoon only card, or else I would rank him a little bit higher, but definitely a really good option if you're looking to platoon. And he comes in at number six. Coming in at number five is going to be the flashback prime, Carlos Gonzalez. Now again, if you compare this to the last card, the reason I give this one a slight edge is because it's a little more balanced, and you don't really have to platoon uh, with this card. He can play any of the outfield spots. Um, he has above average defense, I'd say. He also has a you know a really good arm, 84 arm strength, which is one of the better arms for left fielders. Uh, pretty good speed too, 82 speed. So this card, not only does he hit a little bit, but his fielding isn't too bad either. That's why I give him the edge over the uh, Hamilton. But I rank the flashback cargo number five. And coming in at number four, uh, a lot of you guys might disagree with this one, but again, I put a little bit more value on defense, and this is probably uh, the best defensive left fielder in the game. Um, it's probably between him, Crawford, and Marte, but this card I think is a little bit more well-rounded because of his arm strength and then 97 arm strength. Um, 87, 74 versus righties, which I find to be pretty solid. If you have 70 plus power, I feel like that's really good. Um, and this is a card you don't necessarily have to platoon with. 70, 70, I don't find that to be that bad. You could platoon with him though if you wanted to. And Again, guys, this is one reason why I'm doing <clears throat> these outfield positions separate. Uh, because, you know, if there was this top 10, top 15, this card would get no mention. Um, and one of the reasons is he only he only can play left field, too. So he can't play center field and right field. That's something you really have to be aware of. But if you're looking for a good defensive left fielder, this card is really cheap on the market as well. I think the last time you could get him for like 10 to 15,000, which is super cheap. But definitely a solid card. And if you're looking to at least platoon, um, you know, this is a good card to consider. And he comes in at number 4 on my top 10. Coming at number three is going to be the legend, Ted Williams. Now, he crushes righties, of course, but he also hits lefties very well. 98 vision, 99 discipline, 99 clutch. I mean, the hitting stats are just pretty much maxed out. Except power versus lefties. But you don't need to platoon this card. If, I mean, I give this one a slight edge over the Hamilton because you don't have to platoon this card. And although people give him a lot of hate for his fielding, 73, as you have seen, there are a lot worse fielders out there. So it's not like he's terrible defensively. I would say he's above average. You're just not going to get, a, you know, you're not just going to get any great defense in left field. You're just going to get about average defense, nothing more. He can also play right field for you if need be. Uh, but this card comes in at number three for me. Coming in at number two is going to be Jonas Cespedes Live Series. Now again, I put a lot of emphasis on defense, and this card's pretty similar to the Alex Gordon defensively. 
Um, he's got a little bit better arm. I think Gordon might have a little bit better reaction and whatnot. Uh, he also has decent speed at 67 speed. But this card, guys, it does not let me down all year. This is a phenomenal card. And a lot of times with Inside Edge, he would have 99 power, you know, 94 power versus lefties, 99 power versus righties. Um, his contact isn't the greatest and his vision isn't the greatest either. So if you struggle with players like that, you might not like this card. But I really think this is one of the most underrated cards in the game. I hardly ever see anybody using him. And when he plays up, he's usually 99 overall. I don't want to base it solely off Inside Edge, however. Um, but with Inside Edge or without Inside Edge, I think this is the second best left fielder in, my, in the game. His defense is just remarkable in left field. And if you compare him to somebody like Alex Gordon, he just has more power, which I prefer. So he comes in at number two on my top ten. And at number one, I have to give it to Reggie Stalker. Uh, 99 power on both sides. He hits well against both sides, you, you know, with contact-wise. Good vision. Uh, you don't have to platoon this card. I hope nobody platoons this card if you have this card. It's meant the stubs to get this card. Uh, anyways, though, he does come with good fielding and good speed. 84 fielding, 80 speed. I'd say the one outside of this card is his arm strength, which is only 68. But, again, left field doesn't necessarily require a great arm compared to center field and right field. However, it is definitely nice to have. Um, so that is the one downside. Now, I personally despise this card. Like, I'm not a huge fan of them putting this card in the game. It's super annoying. I, I hate how people can just, you know, spin the stubs and get just a beastly card like this. Um, but I also ex accept the fact this is the best left fielder in the game, and I'm not going to uh, put him any lower just because I despise this card a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you can afford the subs to get him, go for it. I personally don't think it's worth, you know, going out and get him. Um, but anyways, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to rant about this card. It, it definitely is the best left fielder, and I don't think any of you guys disagree. I don't know. You might disagree, but in the comments, guys, let me know who your top five left fielders are, your top three left fielders. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Remember to keep it respectfully. Um, I know a lot of you guys might not agree with my list or whatnot, but. I don't know, different strokes for different folks. Like I said, I put a little bit more emphasis on power and defense, and that's why I ranked some of those cards earlier ahead of other cards. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is card number five, signing out. Peace.